China responds to Iran's attack on Israel. The U.S. committee proved what we've all known about CCP fentanyl pushing. And Lloyd Austin spoke to his Chinese counterpart for the first time since 2022. And more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Surfshark. Whenever you go online, you should be using a VPN like Surfshark to cover your tracks and protect your identity. I'll tell you more at the end. A U.S. congressional committee has finally found what everyone else has known for ages. That the CCP is directly subsidizing the American fentanyl crisis. I'm not sure if that's a reason to celebrate or a reason to keep being disappointed. The reports say that China provides tax rebates as high as 13% to its companies that manufacture fentanyl analogs and precursors used by Mexican drug cartels. And the Chinese companies are exporting these substances despite the fact that it violates both American and Chinese law. And this is despite Xi Jinping's promise to three different U.S. presidents that he'd stop the flow of fentanyl precursors. Now, I like to think the best of people, but I'm concerned she may be lying. And now to the other dangerous, addictive Chinese drug, TikTok. This Saturday, Congress is set to vote on a bill that would force ByteDance, a Chinese company, to divest its control of TikTok. And, as is our government's want, they added funding to Ukraine and Israel into the TikTok bill. At the core is the question of how much control does the CCP have over TikTok. TikTok claims total independence, which is why it was so nice of Chinese diplomats to lobby the U.S. government on behalf of TikTok. The CCP just loves doing things out of the goodness of their hearts, hearts which they harvested from prisoners of conscience. Since U.S.-China dialogue is so productive in accomplishing so much, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin held his first video conference call with his Chinese counterpart since November of 2022. The call with Admiral Dong lasted just over an hour and focused on the need to avoid and de-escalate tensions in the South China Sea. Major General Pat Ryder, the Pentagon press secretary, said that Austin emphasized the importance of continuing to open lines of military-to-military -military communication. Ah, good. More communication. Also covered in the call were the Russia war on Ukraine, North Korea, and the Taiwan Strait. And given China's recent sanctions on U.S. companies for arming Taiwan, the way China's helping Russia's war effort in Ukraine, and China's recent high-level meetings with North Korea, I think that conversation is going to be about as productive as the one about fentanyl. Especially since China has once again sent military aircraft and ships into Taiwan's air defense identification zone. I know you're probably thinking, wait, Chris, didn't you cover a story about them doing that last week, and the week before, and the week before, and the week before? Bill Murray ain't got nothing on my Groundhog Day. In response, Taipei deployed aircraft and ships to monitor the Chinese forces while readying air defense missiles. This is the 85th time this month, yes, I said month, that Taiwan has detected the CCP's warplanes in its airspace. But let's go back to that North Korea meeting. Zhao Liji, the third highest ranking official in the Chinese Communist Party, went to Pyongyang to visit with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un on April 13th. These were apparently the highest level talks between the two communist countries in years, and came shortly after Kim once again test-fired missiles. The two sides discussed deepening cooperation, and considering that China has been propping up the hermit kingdom's economy for years against Western sanctions, this shouldn't be a surprise. But it's especially alarming now, given that North Korea and China are both helping boost the Russian military. And North Korea and Moscow are getting closer in other ways, too, including study abroad programs, meetings with government officials, and sanctions busting. I think at this point, it's safer to put stock in Evergrande than to believe in positive results coming out of Lloyd Austin's phone call. And after the break, is the CCP's economy actually recovering? Welcome back. China's economy hasn't been doing so well lately, and by lately I mean for the past four years. But maybe there's some not so bad news in store for Beijing. An economy that's growing faster than expected. According to official data, which should always be taken with an entire mine of salt, China's GDP in the first quarter grew by 5.3 percent 
which surpassed expectations by many that would only grow by 4.6% in the first quarter, and exceeded party goals set last month of around 5%. This is because China can accomplish anything when it puts its mind to it. Actually, it's because the CCP's factories have been ramping up manufacturing and are flooding markets around the world through overproduction, aiming to outcompete through cheaper prices. And that's really pissing off the United States, European countries, and others around the world. Jan Yellen was recently in the country for the latest in a years-long marathon of talks about concerns over Chinese economic practices. Given the effectiveness of all these rounds of talks, couldn't this have been a phone call? The Beijing Half Marathon is investigating what looks like a fake win by runner He Jie. The videos of the race show three African runners winning, but suddenly slowing down as they approach the finish line, only for He Jie to win. Wow, not only is he a great runner, but he also has telekinetic powers, a true champion. The Beijing Sports Bureau, the municipal body in charge of the sports, told NBC News that the incident had its utmost attention and that the results of this investigation would be promptly disclosed to the public. But I can save everyone time and predict those results will come up with absolutely no foul play whatsoever. And after the break, how did China react to Iran's attack on Israel? Welcome back. Looks like maybe the White House isn't just relying on Zoom calls to go after China's plans, after all. The U.S. is blacklisting four tech companies for their involvement in acquiring and supplying American AI chips to the People's Liberation Army. They're giving one of the scariest things in the world to one of the scariest things in the world. The story would be less terrifying if the headline was, Company Gives Spiders to Public Speaking. Being on this blacklist makes it a lot harder to access American goods and technology. Obviously, the Chinese Foreign Ministry denied the accusations, saying it was an attempt to contain and suppress Chinese companies, and that the CCP would take necessary steps to safeguard its interests. None of that stopped Washington from blacklisting five other companies, though, including Jiangxi Xintuo Enterprise Company, which provided drone components to Iran and Russia. Ah yes, the godless communists helping out the ultra-religious fanatics. Come on, people, at least make it make sense. The CCP is also helping Tehran diplomatically, mostly by regurgitating the Islamic Republic's talking points. After Iran's failed missile and drone strike on Israel earlier this month, Chinese UN envoy Dai Bing said it was a reminder of the importance of the Palestinian question to long-term regional stability. They think it's a good idea to answer questions by firing missiles? Remind the networks to never let the CCP onto jeopardy. But just like China's crumbling infrastructure projects, it's a bumpy road for Iran and China. Some analysts are saying that China's embrace of the mullahs in Tehran is eroding its image in the Middle East. Could it be that the CCP miscalculated by befriending a country that almost all of its neighbors hate? Not that China would know what it's like being a country hated by all its neighbors. But no, that can't be it. Because the CCP thrives off the wisdom of Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era. While Beijing has been relatively quiet or issued statements that seem balanced on paper, the U.S. and its allies are becoming more actively involved in regional affairs in light of the Hamas-Israel war. That's a stark contrast to what a lot of people were expecting after the CCP brokered a truce between Iran and Saudi Arabia. But in another blow to China's Middle East ambitions, G42, a UAE-based tech firm, made a secret deal with Microsoft for $1.5 billion and agreed to divest from China. G42 is a top AI firm that came under scrutiny for its ties to the CCP and its tech sector. Backroom talks last year with the U.S. Commerce Department's Bureau of Industry and Security led to the understanding. Also, I assume their AI was like, seriously? My brain is artificial, and even I know working with China is a terrible idea. G42 denied ever having links with the CCP, but faced potentially punitive measures after an important American lawmaker called for sanctions because of alleged links to Chinese businesses, including Huawei. So I guess maybe the CCP is realizing that trying to be involved in the Middle East is a bit messy. Gosh, the US could have told them that, but then again, that would have meant they would need to listen to the U.S. in those conversations. Now hold on to your horses, because I got a video you'll definitely want to see. But first, this episode is sponsored by Surfshark. When you go online, everything you do is potentially compromised, unless 
you're taking active steps to protect yourself. No matter where you live, no matter what you do online, you should always be keeping your internet activity private with a VPN like Surfshark, especially when you're doing things like logging into your bank account or your credit card online. If you ever use shared Wi-Fi, you're in danger. Even low-rent hackers can steal your password without you even knowing it. And when you travel, especially overseas, you might need a VPN that makes it look like you're in your home country just to log into your accounts. So it saves a huge potential hassle. And you can install it on as many devices as you want, even on your Amazon Fire TV stick. You know, if you want to make it appear like you're logged in from a different country so you can access all the good Netflix shows that are geo-blocked. Seriously, check out Surfshark. Go to surfshark.com slash uncensored to get up to three additional months for free. That's surfshark.com slash uncensored and use the code uncensored. The link is in the description. And in my ongoing attempts to talk about things YouTube considers too controversial by hiding them in gaming content, click on this video about the game The Withering Rooms. It has absolutely nothing to do with Epstein's Island. Not a thing. Don't even know why I'm bringing it up. Let me know what you think. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.